In this video we're going to prove that the ordering of the rational numbers is well defined. So our definition of the rational numbers begins with the notion of a fraction, which we want to momentarily distinguish from a rational number. So if we let m over n and p over q be fractions, we say that the fractions are equivalent if m times q is equal to n times p. Okay, so we're distinguishing the fractions from the rational numbers by writing them with double bars, and we say that those fractions are equivalent and write m over n is equivalent to p over q with that triple equal sign. The reason we distinguish fractions from rational numbers is we want to define rational numbers as sets of equivalent fractions. So the rational number m over n is going to be the collection of all fractions p over q that are equivalent to the fraction m over n as previously defined. So rational numbers are actually s infinitely large sets of equivalent fractions. And then of course the rational numbers, this um, q is just the collection of all rational numbers. Okay, and so uh, with those definitions we can say that m over n is equal to p over q. Uh, the rational number m over n is equal to the rational number p over q if and only if mq equals np. Okay, so we have infinitely many different representations for every rational number. So all of the fractions that you see there, 1 half, 2 quarters, 3 six, 4 eighths, 5 tenths, they all name the same rational number. Okay, but that introduces uh, a complication that we have to deal with. We need to make sure that the result of the operations, such as addition and subtraction, and the relations, such as less than, that we use when we're working with rational numbers don't depend on the names we use. Okay, So if these names all truly denote the same rational number, then the result of adding, the result of multiplication, and the result of comparing with less than ought to always come out the same regardless of what name we use for the rational number. Let's define our order and then we'll deal with that problem uh, specifically here by proving it's well defined. So if we let f1 and f2 be rational numbers, and if we write f1 as m over n and f2 as p over q, then f1 less than f2 means that m times q is less than n times p as compared in the integers. All right. So notice that the definition said that if we write f1 as m over n and if we write f2 as p over q. Okay. The problem is that there are infinitely many different ways that we can choose to do that. Every rational remember, remember has infinitely many different fractional representations. So the question you have to ask is what if we apply this definition using one choice of fractions for f1 and f2 and somebody else applies the definition but uses a different choice of equivalent fractions. Right? The comparison f1 less than f2 ought to be true regardless of which representations you choose. Okay, Because one of our axioms for an ordered field is that the order has to satisfy trichotomy. So if I choose one representation for f1 and f2 and get less than, it better be impossible that somebody else might choose a different representation and get greater than. Okay, So that's the problem. We have to make sure that the order is well defined because we need trichotomy uh, for this to be an ordered field. Okay, so again, comparing two equivalent fractions have to always give the same result regardless of the choice of the names for them. Okay, and another way of putting that, um, saying that the order isn't ambiguous like that, is that the order has to be well defined. Okay, so our theorem is that if we have two fractions, two rational numbers, f1 and f2, then the inequality f1 less than f2 is well defined. So let's prove that and we'll begin by assuming that f1 and f2 are indeed rational numbers. Let's suppose first that we have um, m1 over n1 naming f1 and that we have p1 over q1 naming f2. Okay, So we've chosen out specific fractional representations for these rational numbers. We have m1 over m1, m1 over n1, and we have p1 over q1. And let's suppose that Again, m1 over n1 is less than p1 over q1. Okay, so f1 is less than f2. 
Now suppose that we have a different set of names for F1 and F2. So now we have new names, M2 and N2, and P2 and Q2. Now M2 over N2 is equal to M1 over N1, and P2 over Q2 is equal to P1 over Q1. Okay, both of those fractions for F1 name the rational number F1. Both of the fractions for F2 name the rational number F2. Okay, so they're equal as fractions. And what we need to prove is that we still have the same relationship between F1 and F2, but with the new names. Okay, so we have to prove that M2 over N2 is less than P2 over Q2. That's our goal. Okay, so our assumptions that M1 over N1 and e equals M2 over N2 and that P1 over Q1 equals P2 over Q2 means that we know that we can cross multiply and get that M1 N2 equals M2 N1 and P1 Q2 equals P2 Q1. So we just applied the definition of equality for rational numbers there. Now our assumption that M1 over N1 is less than P1 over Q1 means exactly using again applying the definition of the order that m1 times q1 is less than p1 times n1 okay so our goal is to show that m2 over n2 is less than p2 over q2 and that's equivalent to m2 times q2 is less than p2 times n2 so if we can show that m2 q2 is less than p2 n2 then we've proved our claim we've proved that the order is well defined okay so we're going to start with all the assumptions in the first paragraph and we're going to prove the statement in the second paragraph there. So again, our assumption that the f M1 over N1 is less than P1 over Q1 gives that M1 Q1 is less than N N1P1 or P1N1. Our definition of rational numbers means that our denominator have to be ra natural numbers. So our denominators are positive integers. So in particular, uh, n2 and q2, which were the denominators of our second set of names, are positive integers. And so the product n2 times q2 is greater than 0. And so we can multiply that inequality m1 q1 less than p1 n1. We're going to multiply that whole inequality by n2 q2. All right? And Multiplication by positive integers preserves inequalities, so we get that n2q2 times m1q1 is less than n2q2 times p1n1. And now let's rearrange that. So we're going to rewrite it as m1n2 times q1q2 is less than n1n2 times p1q2. So notice that on the left hand side of the first inequality, we've got m1 and n2 which I grouped together, Q1 and Q2, which I grouped together. On the right-hand side, I've got N1 and N2, which I grouped together, and P1 and Q2, which I grouped together. All right. And the reason I want to group those together is to use our assumptions about equality. So again, we have this inequality. And we know that M1, N2 is equal to M2, N1. P1, Q2 is equal to P2, Q1. So I'm going to substitute those out, um, and I get M2N1 times Q1Q2 is less than N1N2 times P2Q1. So notice that I took that inequality, and I took the red bits, and I substituted them out for their um, equal values there from our equality assumptions. And I got that new inequality. All right. Now I can rearrange that. I can rewrite that as N1Q1 times M2Q2 is less than N1Q1 times N2P2. Notice there's an N1Q1 in both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of that inequality. And that's greater than 0 since those uh, numbers N1 and Q1 were denominators, so they had to be natural numbers. In other words, they had to be positive integers. So we can apply our cancellation property for multiplication and get that N2Q2 is less than N2P2. And that exactly means that M2 over N2 is less than P2 over Q2. 
which was what we had to prove to show that our ordering on the rational numbers was well-defined. So that concludes this video. Thanks for listening.